going to lie. Amen. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning. And welcome to uh, Helping Hand Ministries Christian Fellowship. This is our Sunday school lesson. Yes. On this Sunday morning. And we're going to be talking this morning about the percent, uh, supremacy of Christ. Yes. Coming out of Colossians, the first chapter, verses 15 through 28. And uh, so it's a powerful lesson. And we're going to see what we can Learn from this, glean from it, and see what the Lord has to say to us. Yes. Let's go before the throne of grace. Uh, Father God, we, we thank you so thank much, you. Lord. Thank you. That you've given us another opportunity to come before you. Yes. And you and they said it was good when we came into the house of the Lord. And we thank you, Lord, that you uh, are meeting with us. Because your promise is that we're two or three are gathered, and there you are in the midst yes. of them. Yes. And, and we have met that requirement. And we thank you for that. Thank you. So right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray, God, that you speak to us boldly, mm -hmm. that we will learn more about you. Yes, and we welcome those, God, that are joining with us online, mm -hmm. God, that they too will be blessed by this lesson. And yes. that you, Lord, will enrich their lives, just like you enrich ours. Yes. Give us what we have need of, Lord. You said that you are the author and the finisher of our faith. Mm -hmm. So as we, Lord, look into the word today, Father, I pray that we will be enriched and enlightened and strengthened. We thank you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We got uh, this lesson is broken up into three outlines. The scripture is uh, Colossians 1, verses 15 through 28. And we do have some extra books back there. You want to go? And we broken up into uh, to three lessons, uh, three, three parts. The first part is Christ the creator of the world. That covers verses 15 through 17. Uh, part two is Christ the head of the church. That covers verses 18 through 23. And the third part is Christ the hope of glory. That covers verses mm -hmm. 20, 24 through 28. And if I can, I'd like to see if we can have someone read uh, uh, verses 15 through 17. And then someone read 18 through 23, and I'll read the last section. Amen. Amen. Colossians, right, 1, chapter 1, verse 15 through 17, and it reads it thus. Mm -hmm. Who is the image of the invisible, visible God, the firstborn of every creature? For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth visible and invisible, whether they be throne, or dominion, or principality, power of all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, and in all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleases the Father that in him should all fullness dwell, and having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him, I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. Did you say that in between? 23. 23. And you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your yet now have he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in him in his sight if ye continue in the faith grounded and settled and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which ye have heard and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven First Paul, I made a minister. Amen. Amen. First Paul, I made a minister. And now I rejoice in my sufferings for you, mm -hmm. and fill up in my flesh what is lacking in the afflictions of Christ for the sake of his body, which is the church, of which I became a minister according to the stewardship from God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God, the mystery which has been hidden from ages and from 
from generations, but now has been revealed to his saints. To them, God will to make known what are riches of the glory of his mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Him we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may pre present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. I'm going to ask the Lord to bless the reading of his word. Yes. And um, uh, part, that's something that's not part of this lesson, but I want to just point out uh, that verse 15 said, He is the image of the invisible God. Mm -hmm. Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. That, that uh, what, you think about what's the image of something? And Jesus is the image of the invisible God. So we want to know what God looks like. <laughs> you know, we, we look at Jesus. And, uh, and, and so uh, that, that gives us a, a real uh, pictorial of what, what God looks like, made in his own image. Amen. Uh, let's look at the facts, the principle, and the application of this lesson. The facts are to examine a passage from Colossians that reveals the deity and reconciling ministry of Jesus Christ. And, and you know, Jesus came to reconcile us back to God. Mm -hmm. And that's, that was one of the, the main, one of the main reasons, not the main reason, but one of the reasons he came is to, to, to connect us back. He bridged the, the gap between us and God. The principle is to teach that Jesus Christ and that, that Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone is fully qualified to reconcile sinners to God. That he's the only one that can do this. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, God said, I'm looking for somebody to do this, and Jesus is the only one that can do it. Mm -hmm. He couldn't do an angel couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there was nothing else that could do this but Christ. Mm -hmm. And the application is to help us as students to fully understand and appreciate who Jesus is and what he came to do. That's right. And, and when we when we get that under our belt, and we understand that that he came to 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 reconcile us and knit us back to God, uh, it's it, that's going to be a powerful uh, awareness or awakening. Yes. Okay. Moving on, uh, Christ, the Creator of the world, it says uh, that that He's the firstborn. Mm -hmm. And and even though uh, the firstborn over all creation, and and, you know, that's a Greek word for this, uh, being firstborn. It, it's called protokos. And that protokos, it, it means uh, a priority in time or supremacy in rank. That's being, you talk about being first, supremacy in rank, or, or uh, priority in time. So in the scope of time, uh, he was out front mm -hmm. and it's something so you think about uh, Jesus being the creator or the firstborn over creation and there's no doubt uh, that Jesus is the author of all creation uh, he says that in the beginning was the word and the word was 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 with God and the word was, was God, God. Right. so so he was right there in the beginning and so it's no doubt that 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 and he himself is not a created being. Mm -hmm. So Jesus was met, not created. Mm -hmm. He was a uh, uh, part of the create the, the creator. He, he he and the Father and the Holy Spirit. Yes, they did this thing. And uh, and when we behold the wonder and the glory of the world, and you know it even says this. The word says that the, the whole earth displays His glory. Mm -hmm. And we can look around and we see uh, some places have the four seasons. Yeah. And, and what a, a, a beautiful. Uh, array of uh, colors and and climate change. I mean, and, and really, some people enjoy that. Some people enjoy the four seasons. Yes. Uh, if you only experience two seasons, some people enjoy two seasons. Uh, or some people enjoy just the one season. Yes. There, there are places where they just have a, a, a ambient temperature year round. Constantly. And doesn't get doesn't get uh, too cold. Doesn't get too warm. Yeah. You know, it's just nice all year round. Yes. And the, the water is not never cold. You can go mm. out to the to the beach or whatever, and mm -hmm. the water is always nice and, mm -hmm. and comfortable. Yeah. You can just get in it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we used to go to Atlantic City, and you had to put your toe in there to <laughs> check it out uh. before you jump in. And sometimes it was a little bit cold. Uh. So, uh, 
So uh, we go on to say that that when the thrones of dominions and principalities, look at this. So it says that he's the image of the visible God, the mm -hmm. firstborn over all creation, for by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, whether it's visible or invisible. <laughs> <clears throat> so you know we're <clears throat> excuse me, we're learning that that there are things that we can't see. Yeah, that's right. And, and so he's saying that, that whether it's something that we can see and touch and feel, he's created all of those things. And then there's things that we can't see, touch or feel. He's created those things too. That's right. And, and he covered that because the Colossians, think about this. The Colossians were, were uh, influenced by a group of, a group of people mm -hmm. um, they were called the Nicolaitans. Mm -hmm. And they were, either, they were influenced by this group of people and actually, Nicholas, that, that they named this group after, mm -hmm. he was one of the seven first dis, dis, uh, dis, disciples. I mean, I'm sorry, he was one of the Deacon. deacons. Deacon. One of the first, uh, one of the seven, seven deacons, deacons appointed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then he, he went off and started teaching. Uh, and it, he didn't think what he was doing was wrong. He thought what he was doing was an enhancement mm -hmm. to what was being taught. Yes. And so they was teaching uh, this, this other doctrine that, that uh, that that there was more to it, mm -hmm. you know. That there's other other things that that's in this, you know, these invisible traits and these invisible things were were uh, involved too. So, and 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 we're gonna learn hear about that a little bit more in the ser sermon today. Mm -hmm. But there's a so so that invisible world or that invisible realm. Christ is the creator of that too. So meaning that hey. I got control over all of this and all of that too. All right, let's move on. So that that, that so that, there was a so that's a heresy that was going on with the Colossians. Mm -hmm. and, and you know something when when um, when heresy starts and and if it takes root, it's, it's hard to break that. Mm -hmm. I mean, because it's a mindset. People's mind gets changed when their mind is changed. It's hard to, especially if it's changed from this to that. Mm -hmm. It's hard to, to change it back to, because they they buy into something, and it's like, how did you buy into that? <laughs> and, you know, we see a lot of good people uh, get thrown off Sway, track that's right. Sway uh, by uh, somebody's story yeah. or somebody's uh, uh, made-up theology, and, and it's, it's, a, it's a shame. And so so what, what the Word is saying here that uh, the Colossians uh, heresy seemed to to uh, take uh, take an effect, uh, saying that the angels uh, were mediate they were the mediators between God and man. Mm -hmm. So that was part of the heresy that the angels and you know we know that the angels are ministering uh, spirits. Mm -hmm. They're not the mediator between you know we don't go to the angels to ask them to go to God for us. Mm -hmm. You know, the only person that can mediate uh, our relationship with God is Jesus that's Christ. Jesus. And that's what this is all about, is that Jesus stands in that position of reconciling us, be, be, the reconciliating factor between us and God. Mm -hmm. And so he, the word goes on to say that, uh, that, that he's, uh, whether it's thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, so all of those things that you can think of, Christ is, is in, he's head over all of those things. All things were created through him and for him. And, and I want to say whether good, bad, or different. Mm -hmm. Because Judas was necessary. Yeah. <laughs> we needed him. And and you know, sometimes we, we I don't know if anybody ever feels sorry for Judas, but Judas was necessary. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, to fulfill what was written. A mission. Yeah. And and you know, and, and and if it wasn't Judas, it would have been something else. Somebody but, else. You know, that yeah. was necessary. So sometimes um, these things that that whether good, bad, or different, they're necessary to help shape or mold us. Mm -hmm. And we and when we see that that God is still at work in us, even during what we could may consider rough times or bad times. That's right. Just as well as He's at work in us when we're having great times and good times. Mm -hmm. So. And, uh, and he goes on to say that he's the sustainer, that Christ is the sustainer of all things. Uh, what does that mean, that he's the sustainer of all things? 
Christ? Yeah. Sustainer of all things. Mm -hmm. mm. He, he holds hold. power to yeah. to manifest all things. Mm -hmm. To create a uh, go 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 forth. I get I don't know if I'm phrasing it right, but he has the power to be the goal, go between. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And, and he holds, you know, they say, well, he, he has the whole world in his hand. In his hand. <clears throat> <laughs> and, <clears throat> and he sustains that, you know. And, and that, you know, if you want to look at a picture of that, and he keeps you know, it. He keeps it, you he know. Keeps and, and what does the word say? That there's nothing that can take us well, or I, pluck us out of his hand. Mm -hmm. Well, you see, you think about sustaining the actual meaning, is it support? Mm -hmm. strengthen or something mm -hmm. like that. So I guess, yeah, he is. And, and or a unifying, a unifying factor. He unifies oh, us. Yeah. He, yeah. He, yeah. he holds everything. He holds everything together. together. I said yeah. like, like if you're driving, you got one speed, say 70 miles an hour, you sustain that until you reach a destination yeah. or something yeah. like yeah. that. Yeah. 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 Okay, gotcha. Uh, that's a good way to look at it, <clears> yes. <throat> All right, here's a first <clears throat> practical point. We have been created by Christ and for him. Thus, we fulfill our purpose for existence when we bring glory to him. Mm -hmm. and, and it's all about bringing glory to the Lord. Mm -hmm. it's, it's about giving him glory. Uh, not only just glory, but giving him praise and glory. And so we, uh, when we recognize him as, as the creator. And, and we know what the children of Israel did. You know, they would rather worship the creature <laughs> rather than the creator. Yeah, <laughs> idols. And, and, and what boy, what a, what a blunder that was. Yeah. And and, and even today, you know, how many people uh, are worshiping the, 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 the yep. creature? That's right. Rather than the creator. Mm -hmm. You know, they're giving thanks to the creature. Is it you think they don't really think about where did that creature come from? I mean, so it had to come from who, who, who put it who right. created who, it. Who, yeah, right. who created it. Means they could get past. And and and, and, say, hmm. and I don't try. I'm not trying to ruffle any feathers or anything. But what's the purpose of uh, bow down to the Pope and kissing his hands and his oh yeah, that's his true. feet yeah. and yeah. I don't quite understand that. I don't, I don't understand that either. You know, I I really don't. It may, it's probably something that I'm missing. But I still, this is a man. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? This is a man who that, that, that can't do no more than God lie, lie him. Mm -hmm. But we tend to say, this man is more holier than yeah. others, I mean, than right. thou. But how we know? Yeah. You I know? think that if it's like, just like the president, we're supposed to hold him in high esteem. High esteem but, but we're not to, to worship, worship him. That's right. So That's right. If we keep it on that level, yeah. uh, we do. I'm yeah. saying yeah. we do. But yeah. if people looked at it, like that, yeah, yeah. yeah. from that I point of view. Like, well, Nebuchadnezzar, right? Built the statue. What it was, what is it, three times, yeah. five, three times a day, you yeah, bow down? You bow down and you worship got, the statue. And, and yeah. what made it so bad, he he made that decree and, and couldn't change it. Yeah. It's <laughs> that, that, that's man for you, though. Yeah, we, throwing, we, we trying to throw some confusion mm -hmm. in Yeah, yeah. And yeah. so... Uh, so we will go so when we fulfill our purpose for existence. Uh, we we bring glory to God, mm -hmm. and, you know. And then let me add this in there because we get a lot of times we get hung up on what well, what's my purpose, mm -hmm. yeah. and so we can always go back to this. Our purpose is to glorify God. You glorify God. If, if praise we don't him. have a particular function. Right. You praise and worship then God. Just glorify God. Praise. That's right. In your right. actions and yeah. your in your needs. Yeah. So that's that was right. a problem for me for a very long time. Mm -hmm. Everybody was talking about their purpose. And I'm like, I don't have a purpose. Yeah. I didn't recognize, but you just now didn't, it's yeah. okay. Yeah, you know? yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. All right, moving on to uh, part two, Christ the head of the church. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, it goes on to say in verse 18, and he is the head of the body, the church, who mm -hmm. is the beginning, mm -hmm. the firstborn from mm -hmm. the dead, that in all things he may have the preeminence. Ooh, that's a big word. Yeah, uh, look that word up. <laughs> you know, uh, the preeminence, uh, the preeminent position, meaning that that 
he holds the highest position. I mean, there's there's no one higher yeah. than him. Yeah. And and so and, and and think about this: if you're talking about giving glory to God or giving glory to to, to glorifying Christ, there's there's no one higher than him. Matter of fact, didn't the word says that that when he he was highly mm -hmm. exalted. Mm -hmm. He was and, and all power and authority was given, was given to, him. to him. Yeah. And so so he's he's sitting at the highest position. And that's that preeminence. Mm -hmm. And then it goes on to say and and, and if it had pleased the Father mm -hmm. that in him all the fullness should dwell. You know what? That glass is full. Mm -hmm. Yes. I mean all the fullness means that there's no more can't squeeze nothing else in there. That cup run it over. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and guess what? All the divine powers and attributes, uh, those those powers and attributes that God had to give out was not spread out. You know, God didn't say, well, I'm, I'm giving a little bit over here, a little bit over No, he gave it all up to Christ. To all, yeah. all power and all authority has been given unto me. And then he says, and so because I have all power and authority, he commissioned us to go. Mm -hmm. And he says, and I will be with you. Yeah, go So we're not operating in our own power and authority. We're operating in his power and authority. Mm -hmm. That was the so, uh, <laughs> And so all of that, uh, that, that created, and all of that power and all of those attributes uh, completely dwell in Christ, meaning that Christ is all embodied in him. And, and you know, if we can get the scope of that, you know that that we're we're in relationship with with the most, most powerful. powerful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you think about that. Wow, you know, connected. I mean, that's like plugging, going to uh, plug something into the outlet. You that's know right. That, that that's Georgia power, right? Yeah, that's right. And when you plug that thing in, you know, my my cousin preached that message years ago. Yeah. No power like Georgia power. He goes to Georgia power, <laughs> and then he switched that up. There's no power like Thank God's God power. power. But I think that best thing about that is that he was he he was humble. Yes. He was and so I'm thinking sometimes if we get all like that we might get beside ourselves. <laughs> yeah. to, You're to, to right. Jesus, You're right. You know, yeah. We, we have to be careful, but he just never betrayed that and I always say we just need to live like Jesus. And, and, and that like, and that's the fall that's of the, mankind. Uh, you yeah. say he never betrayed he never betrayed his what oh his, he, right his, his position he, 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 he just, he is what we strive to him be. be and we strive to yeah. be. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, we yeah. should be like, even though he's all of that. Yeah. It wasn't arrogant. Arrogant. Right. Yeah. And, and like you said, he, he remained humble through it all. Mm -hmm. You know, just nowadays, you give somebody a little something. We get it. And I mean, even, I don't know if you know, even yesterday, watching little boys play basketball. I mean, the, the little guys, mm -hmm. you know, made a good shot and he was... Get yeah, the swag. Yeah. And it starts out at a, yeah. at, at a young age, you But know? that, for seeing others do that, true, yeah. true, you know. True. You know that's what that's, that's where it comes from. But then you have that. They found the wrong they, person. Yeah, but then they they proud of themselves and, and you know, and nothing wrong with that playing that game because, mm -hmm. I mean that's that's how that's how yeah, the ball yeah, bounces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we have to set our sights. Higher, higher, yeah. Higher things. That's right. And so uh, moving on to verse nineteen, okay. it pleased the Father that in Him. All the fullness should dwell. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. for by him to reconcile all things to himself by him. For by him he reconciled all things to himself, himself by him. Right. So he's right. doing the work for himself. Right. <laughs> and think about that. So so Christ is, is doing the work, reconciling us back to himself mm -hmm. for himself. Mm -hmm. And and you talk about somebody in your corner. You know, you got a corner man. Yes. And you don't only have a corner man, but the corner man is your cut man. Yeah. He's everything. Yeah, he's, he's your, you know, he, he's that person. And he's doing it because he wants to do it. Right. And Christ tell you, all yeah. the way through to through the Father, oh, through him. Mm -hmm. You know. And so this word, and, and the word reconcile, in this text, context means to change and or forgive. to exchange. Yeah. To change or to exchange, 
Um, and, and man is reconciled to God when God restores man <clears throat> in a right relationship. <clears throat> so when you come in right relationship with God, you know that that work of reconciliation has taken place. Yes. So that means that you had to either change from the way you were or you had to exchange something for something. So you exchange the, the, the good for the bad, right? Mm -hmm. Or you exchange the, the right for the wrong. Or you, uh, when you change, you know, uh, the word says this, old things have passed away and behold, new things have come. So you change from the old to the new. And, uh, and God helps you with that change, change process. <clears throat> so it says, through the blood of the cross. So how is this done? Through the blood of the cross. And, and we, you know, that blood that never loses its power. The blood that Jesus you know, shed. The, the cross, the, the symbol of the cross will never be diminished. You know, mm -hmm. uh, we're always going to remember that, mm -hmm. uh, what took place on the cross. And even people that don't believe, you know, that symbol is right before their eyes. And, 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 and it's, it's amazing how, um, you know, people wear crosses. Yeah, and, yeah. And don't even understand uh, the what true the meaning, cross, uh, the true, what it represents. Yeah, yeah. But they, they'll, they'll sport their crosses. Mm -hmm. And so by him, by him to reconcile all things to himself by him, whether things on earth or things in heaven. <laughs> and, and look at that. Because guess what? Didn't something happen in heaven? <laughs> Ooh. So you, so he's reconciling things that took place in heaven too. So he's working on that that kabafel that took place with uh, with, with Lucifer. Yeah, with Satan. When he was uh, yeah. when he was kicked in. That'd be right. I mean, he, he, uh, for want to overthrow the government, <laughs> so to speak. That, that seed that was planted, because you know he took uh, uh, a, a third of the angels with him, a, a third of them fell. But you know what? The, the other angels saw this. They witnessed this stuff happening. Mm -hmm. So, so they may have been, they may not have sided with Satan, but the the seed was planted. And so that that Christ is at work reconciling that. Back to the Lord too, mm -hmm. or to Himself. But you know, and, and 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 that go to show you how awesome our God is. Now He could have, you know, He could have prevented that. Mm -hmm. Could have, you know, yeah. could have mandated that. No, 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 no. Uh, well, like on the ship, what they call a mutiny. Yeah, no, none yeah. of that exists. Yeah. But no, give you a, a, a willing mind, a, a mind to think and do, you know, right. accordingly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah that, is, that is something. Isn't it? <laughs> Things, whether in heaven, having made peace mm. through the blood of the cross, and it's something about um, uh, you notice that where the peace, where the peace comes from, you know, we, the peace comes from the blood of the cross, you know, and and, uh, and and we don't have to make our own peace with God. But Jesus made the peace for us, so He paved the way, mm -hmm. and He's continued to pave the way, and He. And he's an advocate. He's 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 fighting. He's he's that lawyer that's pleading your case for you. Mm -hmm. He's he's talking to God for you know when we whether we're doing something good or or whether we do did something wrong. He's pleading our case. Mm -hmm. And he said, Father, you see what he just did. Boy, that's, <laughs> you know, it's like a, somebody made a good shot and you're calling them and you're yeah, 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 shouting yeah, and you're yeah, just yeah. The, screaming at the top of your lungs. That's line. right. That's right. And even when they when they made a foul. You know, you, you still wanna don't want them to be down about Yeah, it. yeah, like, yeah. You, you, Lift you, them up. You, you, yeah. Yeah. And so that's the how the, the position that Jesus takes. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, because we, we slip and trip. He says, Come on, you can still do it. And so he makes that peace for us. And it comes through the blood of the cross. Or right, another practical point. As members of Christ's body, we are to look to him for spiritual growth and guidance. And that's how that, uh, that he's our he's our source. He says, "I'm sending you another just like me." Mm -hmm. He said, "The Holy Spirit." He says, "He will lead and guide you into all truth." Mm -hmm. So, so we look to him as a, a, a source of our uh, 
our spiritual growth and guidance. And uh, and so that's where we get it from. We get it from him. And, and if we're lacking anything, he says, if you're lacking anything, and James, he says, if a man lacks wisdom, let him yeah, ask of God. Yeah, that's right. He gives generously to those who ask. That's right. So even if we realize that we, we need to be buffed up in a certain area. Mm -hmm. <laughs> ask. All we got to do is ask. Exactly. And, and, you know, I think that a lot of times we fall short because I, I used to say, let me see how this work out. <laughs> you know, I want to work it out. Uh, yourself. Yeah, yeah. work it out first. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when it don't work out, because, you know, any time we take, take it in our own hands, it's not going to work out. Mm, it's not good. And then and you may, and I'm going to say this, you know, we be, we'll get fooled because it may seem to be working, mm -hmm. but in the end, mm -hmm. it don't work out. Mm -hmm. You know, we got to turn that thing over to the Lord and let him work it out, right? Yeah. God, we, we All can, right. We Amen. Can, we can be delusional. Mm -hmm. Okay. Verse 21. And you, who once were alienated and enemies in your own mind by wicked works, yet now he has reconciled and his body and his flesh through death. So what he's saying is, look, that... There's a time where our minds were so far away from God, mm -hmm. so far away from the things of, of the Lord. We weren't thinking about God. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, even though I, I had an inkling of God, I wasn't thinking about God while I was out there partying. No, sir. And, and doing what I was doing. And then maybe when it came time to you go into church, <laughs> I would say, you know, I would think about, oh, boy, here we go. <laughs> you know, for the next, you know, three or four hours. But, uh, but he says this. He says uh, that it was something that happened uh, with the death of Christ. We were purified, that God found the way to purify us through the death of, 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 of Christ. And this is a, and, and you know what? There was a big transfer of rights taking place. That this purification of death, there was a, a transfer of rights. And, um, it's like transferring things from one owner to another. Mm -hmm. Because when we are born, we're born into uh, into Iniquity. this world uh, under the first Adam, mm -hmm. into a world of sin or to a life of sin. Yeah, That's how we're born. Mm -hmm. And so we're when we accept Christ into our life, we're transferred, those rights are transferred to Christ. And so that's, and it, and it only can be done through his death. You know, because of his death, his burial, his resurrection, that transformation or that ownership takes place. And uh, and and guess what? And, and when, when once we belong, so once we belong, let me say it this way: once we belong to the race of Adam, but and and but now we belong to the race of God. Mm -hmm. So we, we're part of God's family. And we no longer are alienated. And that's what the word says here. He says, who once, who once were alienated and enemies in your mind. So we were alienated from God because uh, we didn't know God. Or we were we were part, we were in another race. That's right. All right, here's a here's a, here's another practical point. To fully appreciate God's work in our lives, we need to remind ourselves of the depth from which he has lifted us. Ooh, boy. <laughs> so God has lifted me. Yep. And, and, and some some of us have have been truly lifted from some, some horrible places. Yeah. And, 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 you know, we, each one of us have to examine, you know, in our own life, our own walk, where he's taken us from. To where he's where he's bringing us, or where he's where brought, he brought us. us to, and 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 mm -hmm. and when we do that, we we'll, we we'll really fully appreciate what God has done, mm -hmm. and and especially if we were in a place where we know that there was no way out, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> you know that, so that my back was up against the wall, mm -hmm. and there was no place for me to go, but God made a way mm -hmm. for me to get out of that situation. That's right. And sometimes that's all you need to get, make that turn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I say, I call that coming to the end of yourself. <laughs> you, know, you come to the end of yourself, when you, and God delivers you. When you realize you can't do any more. <laughs> Ooh, boy, I mean, that, I mean, that's... That's pretty dumb. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and, and that's, that's when you uh, 
um, have that great appreciation. Mm -hmm. And that's what the word means when it says that he who has been forgiven much loves much. Mm -hmm. yes. Because right. that person know because they know because they know. Yeah. I yeah. mean, and I don't care. They're not changing their mind. Mm -hmm. they, they're, they're, they're hooked. You know, like you, you hook a fish. They're not, they're not letting go. Mm -hmm. And I don't, they don't care what's going on. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm in this for the long haul, mm -hmm. forever. You say what, forever? Yeah, forever and ever. And so we're going to move on. So it says, verse, in the body of his flesh through the death, to present you holy, blameless, and above reproach in his sight. Mm -hmm. Only through Christ can we be presented. He wants to present us blameless. You know, it's something, you know, when you, and think about this. We're going to be, as a bride of Christ, mm -hmm. we're going to be presented to God. He's going to present us to God. He's going to say, God, this is my bride. Mm -hmm. and, and when he presents us to the Father, we're going to be blameless. And, and that's the reason it talks about we're going to be dressed in white. Because white represents that, that blameless or that purity. purity. And so, and if you think about the work that has to be done, to clean us up, <laughs> so that we can be done. That's what he's at. That's what he's doing now. He's at work in us now, preparing us so that we can be blameless. That he yes. can present us blameless. That's right. And and you know, so in other words, we need to stop resisting <laughs> and allow him to clean us up. And that's really all he's doing is, is cleaning us up so that we can be presented blameless uh, before the before the Father. It says above reproach. And that above reproach means, look, I can't accuse you of anything. You know, and, and, and guess what? If somebody tried to accuse you of something, they'd be falling on deaf ears because they go, somebody, oh, no, that's not so-and-so. I, I don't even want to hear it. And, and, and you don't even want to entertain somebody that's trying to bring a reproach against somebody you know is an upright person. Yes, you don't right. even entertain it. Above reproach in his sight. And if, in verse 23, if indeed you continue in faith, grounded and steadfast, you are not moved away from the hope of the gospel, meaning that we are rooted in the hope of the gospel. Mm -hmm. What is the hope of the gospel? You know, that I be transformed, right? That I be renewed in the yes. spirit of my mind. Yes. The hope of the gospel is that, that, that I know that, that I need to have faith, because yes. without faith it's impossible to please him. That's right. So all of these things begin to uh, to take uh, 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 priority in our life, or should take part in our life, and that's what this is talking about, the priority of faith. Uh, the, and, and, and guess what? Those truly reconciled uh, are, uh, must truly persevere. <coughs> <laughs> so if, and, and something about Persevere, you know, meaning that you need to stand. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, he's going to reconcile you, but, <clears throat> but we have to to do something too. That's right. Yeah, I mean, we can't just say you do all the work, Lord. <laughs> I mean, he's going to save us, but guess what? We want to be. We, at some point in time, we we want to need to. We need to want to be saved. You know, Lord, thank you for saving me. Now I need to to walk right. Mm -hmm. You know, I need to put on my walking shoes. That's right. right. That's what he right. said. I'm gonna walk around heaven, right? <laughs> and then, so we need to we need to begin to do the, the right thing once he he puts us on the right track. And and so that's where we, we what it talks about uh, uh, persevering, and it's important for for us as believers to continue uh, in, in godly con conduct, meaning that that once we understand that this is a good thing to do. Continue to do the good thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, he says that he that knows to do good and don't do it, that's sin. Yeah, yeah. And so we don't want to fall into that trap where we we know something is good to do, but we just <coughs> don't do it. We decide, well, I'm not going to do that today or tomorrow. <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> so we need to, uh, even, it's even more important for believers to continue in the truth of the gospel, we need to know the word. What does the word say to us? What is the word speaking to us? We need to know the truth of the gospel because we are saved by grace through faith. 
And that grace is that unmerited favor of God. Mm -hmm. But through faith, because he said he saved us, we got to believe that. That's right. And, and, and you know, we know that the basis of, of, of our, our faith is we have to believe it. The basis of us being saved, we have to believe that he said it, and I believe it. And so, uh, uh, <laughs> another practical point. We experience assurance of Christ's saving and persevering work in our lives as we continue in sound doctrine and live in faith. So meaning that, and this is what we're just talking, we need to continue to walk in what we know is good. Mm -hmm. As he begins to reveal things to us, we need to walk in those things. Continue in those things. Um, continue uh, uh, allowing those things to, to take shape in our lives. And you know, one of my favorite ones is uh, uh, get it in your heart because out of the heart flows the issues of life. Mm -hmm. You know, let it become a heart thing. You know, and, and sometimes we got to eat that stuff. You know, we got to eat the word. Uh, die, get it in, get it inside of you, mm -hmm. so that that no matter what comes, uh, uh, you want to expel the word. That's right. Or expel that lifestyle. And then Paul, he moves on and starts talking about the, the things that he's going through a little bit. Verse twenty three. He. Um, uh, Verse 20, well, actually verse 24, he says, and now I rejoice. Paul, what are you rejoicing in? He said, I'm rejoicing in my suffering. Now, how can somebody that's in prison <laughs> say I'm rejoicing in, in his, my suffering? In his suffering. Mm -hmm. Because, and, and why could Paul, I mean, anybody, why could Paul say, how could Paul say that? Mm -hmm. if, if he's uh, in prison and know that at night he's chained up to a guard, and how could he say I'm rejoicing in my suffering? Well, he said he was a, a slave of uh, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So he, 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 he wasn't worrying about nothing else. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and we can also see that, that his suffering uh, was going to turn out to be good for somebody else. Mm -hmm. you yeah. know, I mean, this good. thing is, you know, it's not always, woe is me. You know, a lot of times we go through things and we say, woe is me. Example. Uh, yeah. but, but there's somebody that may benefit from, from what you're going through. That's right. And, and, and we need to learn how to share those. Some, sometimes we need to learn how to share our experiences. That's right. And, and it may save somebody uh, some heartache or some trouble. And so that's what uh, Paul was talking about. He said he was able to see that his suffering worked something good for others so that he can say that his sufferings uh, were for those uh, Colossian Christians. That's what he was saying, that my suffering is for you. And, and he meant that. He meant that, that, look, I'm suffering for you. And so uh, what was Paul's motivation? What, what, what was motivating him to, to uh, suffer? That others might be saved. Yeah, yeah, that was the motivation. And, and uh, you know, that, that commercial is... Super Bowl. Time. I think that was a, a, one of those Super Bowl commercials. Guy come out and said, "What's my motivation?" What's my motivation? <laughs> you know, my motive. And Paul's motivation is so that others could be be touched, or mm -hmm. others could be saved, mm -hmm. uh, and and to build the the church of, of Jesus Christ. You know, because uh, he you know he was uh, in that position where he was facilitating uh, the building of the the kingdom of God, and, and God was using him. <coughs> and uh, there was a group of um, um, people they were called ascetics mm -hmm. and their focus was on holiness and, and and you know you think about it that we have different groups out here even today and they have different focuses and so this group of people their focus is on, on holiness spiritual growth and perfection mm -hmm. and so because that focus on that um they were a little bit off, off base because Paul uh, was following Jesus and his focus was around people. <laughs> you know, that's what Jesus' focus was. His, the people, his focus was gathering people. Come follow me is what Jesus said. That's right. And he says, I will make you to become fishers of men. <laughs> you know, and, and so uh, the other group is saying that you need to 
to be holy and spiritual and all of it and, and perf perfect uh, first. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what you need to be first. And if we can't be all of that first to do the work of Christ, <coughs> he says, look, I'm, a, I'm, I'm going to mold and shape you. Yes. And when we allow him to mold and shape us, then we, we're actually getting him involved in our, our life and he's doing something mm -hmm. for us. Mm -hmm. So so for, so Paul found holiness, spiritual growth, and, and, and maturity in pursuing the things of others. Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. And, and you'll find out that when you get involved in, in sharing the gospel or mentoring or, or you know, you got somebody that you are conversing with, you find that we use it all the time as iron sharpens iron. Yes, yes. You find that you grow and you, you feel enriched and, and, uh, and it could be only a few minutes a day or a couple of times a week or whatever. But you find out that during those times that, mm. that something takes place. This is what Paul was saying. I'm investing in other people. Mm -hmm. And so and, and guess what he's doing even today? He's investing in our lives. Mm. Because we're going through his, his his literature, we're going through his books, and we're talking about uh, what was on his mind and what was he trying to convey to us. So Paul says, My stewardship is from Christ. Mm. You know, I'm a steward. And he says in in and uh, it comes from Christ. I didn't make this up. You know, I didn't. Uh, I didn't put myself in this position. Mm -hmm. what Paul was saying, I didn't create this position and put myself here. Mm -hmm. He says, "Really, I'm a slave. A steward is a slave <laughs> who manages uh, his master's affairs." Okay. And so Paul was saying, "Look, I'm. I'm a steward. I'm out here managing my master's affairs." And so Paul says that that I'm a servant of the body of Christ. Mm the church, and he did not take his position, uh, this position on his own initiative, but he took it according to the appointment from God. He said, look, uh, I met Jesus on the road to Damascus, right? <laughs> and, he, and he says, and, and if something happened, because I didn't go looking for J Peter, John, or mm -hmm. all of those guys, I, he said, no, I went out into the wilderness for three and a half years. Mm -hmm. And, and learned of Christ. And that's what he did. He says, I, so what I learned, I didn't learn from no man. And and so he he uh, had that that intimate relationship with Christ. I'm a steward and I was appointed by God. And so he says, I'm in this position not because I put myself in this position. And so here's another practical point. We must never allow suffering to deter us from declaring God's word. Our trials may be set upon us to benefit others. And, you know, that sometimes that's a hard pill to swallow. Yes, sir. I mean, because, ooh, I'm going through this, <laughs> so somebody else won't have to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and it's, uh, I, I was thinking, as I was going over this lesson, the sheep and the goats. Mm -hmm. I mean, because it was the, the scapegoat that got the got the blame. He, he got all the stuff, and then they took him out of the wilderness, you know. And and so sometimes, remember early on, we said that that um, good, bad, and different. That some mm -hmm. things we go through that, that it, it could benefit others. Yeah, yeah. And this is what Paul is saying. He's saying that um, that that never allow suffering to deter from declaring God's word. We need to continue to uh, talk Jesus, even though things may be hard for us or we may be going through some difficult times. And I, I've met people that, that I'll shake my head and say, I don't, I don't see how, they, how they're how doing it. And they're still praising God and they're glorifying God. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm sure God hears it. And so, so Paul makes a statement, verse 27, to them, God will will to make known what are the riches of the glory of his mystery, of this mystery among the Gentiles. And, and you know, this mystery of godliness is things that were hidden. You know, Revelation Genosco, Revelation Knowledge, that God is the one that opens up our, our minds so that we can understand the word. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can read it and read it and read it and get nothing out of it. But then all of a sudden you read that and the, the light bulb goes off and say, oh, I, I see or I understand what that means. That's revelation knowledge. 
But before you get the revelation knowledge, it's just a mystery what the words are saying. And, and so what Paul was saying is that God is, is making known the glory of this mystery. He wants us to understand the mystery. He wants us, he wants to reveal himself to us mm -hmm. so that it's no longer a mystery. He said that they among the Gentiles, and, and guess what? That's who Paul was talking to, talking to those Gentiles. He was talking to those people that were so alienated from, from God, mm -hmm. who were, were, who were uh, not a part of that race. You know, they were part of the Adam race. Yeah. And God said, God wants them to be a part of his race. And so he says, in, in, in him we preach. He says this, he says, among the Gentiles, which is, which is Christ in you. So guess what? The only way that we can get this, this mystery solved mm -hmm. in our life is we got to have Christ in us. That's right. That's right. We got to invite Christ in. He said, the Christ in you, the hope of glory. Him we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom. He said, "Look, I'm going to I'm going to warn you. I'm going to teach you, <laughs> and you know, and and uh, and I'm going to try to impart some wisdom to you." That's right. God is going to do the revealing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all I can do is put put it out there. <laughs> I put it out there. God, let God uh, let God reveal it to you. But the the, the main point here is that that that. The mystery is that Christ is in you. And they needed to understand that Christ comes to live in you. He says that we will come and take up our abode in you. Yes. And then he says that the hope of all glory. And it isn't hard, it is it's, it isn't our hard our own work uh, or devotion to God. It isn't our own hard work or devotion to God or or our, the power of our spirituality. Instead, it's the abiding presence of Jesus Christ. So it's nothing that we can muster up. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, we can we can go through the motions, but when Christ is in us, it it, it's, it makes the difference. And and you know what, uh, the word says they had a form of godliness, mm -hmm. but denied God thereof. Mm. And and so often we see people that practice a form of godliness. They don't have Christ in them. And, and I'm glad I'm not the one that has to determine that. That's right. You know, that's not me. That, I mean, that's God. God determines if Christ is in you or not. Or Jesus himself will, will uh, verify. It says the Spirit bears witness uh, who, who are his. And so the, my question is how much, how much Jesus can you get inside of you? <laughs> how much Jesus do we want inside of us? Mm. You know, remember that, that that's the full thing. Yeah. He's the fullness, right? God, God fullness filled him up and gave him everything. Yeah. And oh. so now he wants to come and share that with us. How much Jesus do we want inside of us? And so the last practical point is this. We should show by our lives and words that the only true basis for future hope is knowing Christ as our personal Savior. Mm. And, and that's what we need to do. We need to know Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. And, and you know, I want to say stop stop messing around. Uh, get, to, get to know him. Invite him in. And he says, I stand at the door and knock. I mean, that's how close he is. He's at the door. He's at the door knocking. And and all we got to do is let him in. Yes. Open up the door and let him in. study today. 
Sorry. Bless those, God, who cannot make it because of illness or sickness, yes, God, yes. that you would touch them in a special way. Yes. Let them know exactly who you are, and let them experience your wonderful generosity, God, of hope, of faith. And we cherish you, and we thank you so much in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let me get this little primary book here. Okay. That's all right.